Hi there, and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to share with you a schematic diagram that is as near representation as I can get to the original circuit of this DIY guitar preamp that I built some six or seven years ago and made a demo video of shortly thereafter. The reason why it's only a representation and not 100% correct is that shortly after the build, I actually altered the circuit to uh, suit a particular need. And I deleted the output transformer, which changed a little bit of the circuit. You'd think that wasn't a problem, but at the time I hadn't documented the original circuit and I didn't think that it was overly important for whatever reason. And I know I'm going to get roasted for this, but that's just how it is. That's just how it turned out. The good thing is I did have some images to go back and look at the circuit with, but uh, I wasn't able to actually see the exact wiring connections of the potentiometers or see their values, but mostly they haven't changed. I may have just changed the volume potentiometer and in any case I can use um, prior knowledge and electronics knowledge to work out roughly what that would have been and get you really close to that original circuit anyway. The reason why I altered it was you know I deleted the output transformer so that it would sound better plugged into an amplifier because with the output transformer it was kind of a little dull and lifeless. The output transformer acted like a choke and actually choked off some of the highs when you know you used it with a high impedance uh, input on, say, your amplifier. When plugged into a speaker, though, it kind of evened out and it didn't sound too bad. And that's that's basically how it was operating in that that video that I made. Uh, you know, six or seven years ago, which was actually the first video on this channel. So let's check out that schematic. So this is it, and I can say with high certainty that everything up to this point is 100% accurate. So my only real area of uncertainty is just here, which oddly enough is going to affect the tone the least and affect the output the most. But for all intensive purposes, this should work really well in that particular format. And the tonal differences should only be very, very mild indeed. On the flip side, we've got this output transformer, which was an audio transformer out of the mixer stage of a Plessy ex-military transceiver from 1958 which you may have trouble getting your hands on. I do have that still here if anybody has any questions on it I may be able to run some tests and give you some values and things on it but basically this was the high impedance side of it the side that measured a higher resistance and this was the low impedance side which is your output side which went to the output jack and that measured a lower resistance. It wasn't an exact science the way that I'd done this part of the circuit. I just made it a lower resistance because I knew that it would be the low impedance side of the transformer which would run a speaker better. Uh, quite sure that's a 1M. It could, could have been a 2M. I've just got this feeling that that was 2M. But 1M will work just the same. Uh, the value of this pot cannot go too low as uh, the cathode resistor on this cathode follower and the other two pots here are all in parallel. So if that value gets too low, it'll make too much of an influence on this value and actually shunt more of your output to ground. So you need this, this to be, you know, close to 100K. 
nearly 100% sure that this tone or treble pot was 1M. So that's accurate. Not sure about the 1N um, capacitor there. It could have been a higher value. What I suggest is you try it. If, if it actually uh, bleeds some of your highs off when you wind it back, uh, it's probably fairly accurate. Other than that, uh, the circuit is, is exactly as it was. Uh, if you look at this section here, it'll kind of look familiar if you're used to seeing JCM 800s circuits. Uh, the only difference is no second input here, and some of the values are different. Like these guys here, these cathode resistors, are 10K on the JCM800. This one is 2.7K, and uh, these were 100K on the JCM800, which is accurate. This one's on minus 50, the JCM800 at 100K here. And just some of the capacitor values are slightly different as well. But other than that, it's very kind of close-ish to a JCM800 that's been tweaked. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. And I apologise for not being able to provide a 100% accurate schematic. It's a shame that uh, I didn't document things a little bit more than what I did at the time. Anyway, have a great day. I'll catch you later.